Test, test, test. It's good. Tracy. Stacy. Woohoo. Stacy Pappas. Colossians 2, 6 through 7. Colossians 2, 6 and 7. Yeah. Good morning, church. It's good to be back with you guys. Thank you guys so much all for your prayers as uh, we uh, just had an awesome time. We'll, we'll share a little bit more about that in a few minutes. But uh, just uh, who's ready to worship the Lord this morning? Let's all stand together. 
Let's give the Lord praise. I was buried beneath my shame. Who could care? Colossians 2, 6 and 7. As you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him, rooted and built up in him and established in faith, as you have been taught, abounding in it with thanksgiving. 
We have received a wonderful gift. His name is Jesus Christ. Amen. Yes. And uh, what, it's what we do with that gift that makes a difference in this world, don't, isn't it? If we just sit on that gift, then it goes nowhere. But if we give that gift away, it goes and it's greatly expounded as we give it away. Amen. So today, let's give that gift away. Let's be free in worshiping him and praising him as we have this opportunity, as the worship team leads us that way. But remember, we have a gift that we have the ability to give away. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this day. I want to glorify in this day and thank you that you called my name out of that grave. You called me as an individual to be a servant for you, Lord. And we, I want to thank you, Lord, for that opportunity that you have given us. Lord, as we worship today in this service, help us to enter into worship and to praise you freely, Lord. And I just thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Why don't you turn and find somebody around you? Just greet them, share the love of Jesus, give a hug, a high five, or a handshake. We just have one rock and one salvation, and we're here to worship him with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength.
credit for any goodness, for any righteousness. It is all you. So this morning, we just want to respond to your love. 
We want to declare that it is Christ alone that is our rock and our salvation and our hope. But in that, Lord God, how could we, how could we ever worship you enough? How could we ever praise you enough? Just give ourselves to you, Lord.
set for a heart singing hallelujah song yet just thinking of a lion out there in his domain when they roar when they roar everything within its voice takes attention to it it's not that meow it's that roar that gets 
the animals around it, thinking that uh, there's something bigger than they are. And I think we need to speak that today. We need to sing that praise to the Lord. We need to lift up, like it says, that line within us and make that noise, that sound that comes from the gut that says, praising God. Not just that we're trying to impress anybody, but we're trying to let Him know that we're praising Him with that lion, not a roar. I don't want to hear a roar, but I want to hear a, a praise the Lord to Him from this congregation because that's who we are here to worship today. We're not here to worship ourselves or be happy that the worship team is leading. We're very thankful because we got a blessed one, but we're here to praise Him. And as they sing it again, the chorus again, please, that we just lift up our voices and we just praise him with everything we got. Everything we got. Maybe you're waiting for a breakthrough. And this is your breakthrough that will come through your obedience to worship him wholeheartedly. Amen? Pastor. Don't you get shy on me, lift up your song. You got a lion inside of those lungs. Get up and praise the Lord. Oh, come on, my soul. Don't you get shy on me, lift up your song. that we have in this praise if you have a prayer request today I want you to raise your hand 
anywhere in the congregation. Congregation, look around. You see the individuals that they have their hand raised. Some of the individuals from the team are not are still not feeling well. They have some issues. Waiting on the doctor to tell us what it is, but uh, we also remember them. So if you keep your hands raised, we're going to have this congregation look around. If you have somebody close to you, reach out your hand, walk next to them, touch them, whatever you need to do. But we're going to pray because we have a healing God. Because of our praying, we have a healing God who went to the cross. Heavenly Father, right now, Lord, as you look across this congregation and you see each and every one of them that have their hand raised, Lord, that you will reach out and take care of that need, Lord, financial, emotional, physical, whatever it is, Lord Jesus. In the scripture, it is written, by Jesus' stripes, we are healed. And we stand upon that, claim that, that each one of us have that faith in us to claim the healing that is ours, the financial that is ours, whether it's a job or some other situation. Emotionally, we are stable and we are secure in you, Lord Jesus, that you are our healer, Lord Jesus. And we just thank you, Lord, for this congregation. We thank you for their faith in believing, Lord Jesus. Where two or three are gathered, you are here. We feel your presence this morning, Lord Jesus. And we thank you. We praise you, Lord Jesus, for your healing and your provision in our lives. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, worship team. You may be seated. We have a special treat for you today, if you want to call that. We re reach out to the, car or the different organizations in our valley that are providing services for people. And it is my privilege today to introduce Betty Jo with the Pregnancy Center. She's going to take a few minutes and she's going to just let us know what the, they are doing in the Grand Valley, Grand Valley and how we can help them. So Betty Jo. Good morning. Thank you for blessing me with that. This is like my favorite part of my job is getting to join other congregations on Sunday morning and just remember the worldwide body of Christ. And that was beautiful and it blessed my heart today. So I want you guys to know that. Thank you to the worship team. Um, but as Paul, Pastor Paul said, my name's Betty Jo. I'm the client services director at the Pregnancy Center. Um, thank you so much for this invitation. We are so thankful for the churches in the valley that partner with us. We could not do what we do without you. So thank you so much. Um, we live in a great place for a place that um, honors life and values life and what a blessing that is. We at the Pregnancy Center, um, we have a, we're hitting an awesome milestone this year. We, are, we have been in serving the Grand Valley now for 40 years. So yes, yes, absolutely. Applaud for God because the way that he has built and sustained our ministry over the last 40 years is truly amazing. Um, little history on us. On Sanctity of Human Life Sunday, which was in January, I got to speak at a different church, and the church actually that planted the very first seeds for our pregnancy center. And I talked to one of the pastors there. It was in 1984. He was seeing some of the protests that were going on in this valley concerning the pro-life movement, and they were getting a little contentious, and he was trying to think about ways that he could help that wouldn't be so contentious. And so he was leading a Bible study at St. Mary's Hospital at that time for some of the employees. And um, one of the helicopter pilots, he told them what his heart was. And the helicopter pilot had a brochure for a pregnancy center in Denver. And he gave him that brochure. And he said, well, this is what they're trying to spread across the country to help. So that pastor set that brochure on his desk. The next week, he pe preached a sermon talking about the pro-life movement and how different ways we can help. And then the next day, two men were in his office saying, what can we do? And those men took that brochure and took it home to their wives. And those two women were some of the very first women that started our center. And so God put a lot of people in the right place at the right time with the right information in order to start our center. And he sustained us ever since. So praise him for that. Um, <clears throat> yes. <laughs> And we are really focusing on our 40-year anniversary, a legacy of hope. Um, so in that 40 years, there's been lots and lots of clients, lots and lots of volunteers that have helped our center. And right now, we have two 
volunteers in our center who are third generation volunteers. They're in their late 20s and their grandmothers both served. One of them, um, she came in, she's 94 now. She came in last month to tour our new center because she hadn't seen it and she was in tears over all of the things that we are able to offer our clients now and it was such a blessing to meet her. So that really is a legacy of hope and that's what we're focusing on this year. Um, while we live in a great place for the to be life affirming, um, our little pocket in Grand Junction, as you know, is situated in Colorado. <laughs> so Colorado as a whole um, has some of the most progressive abortion laws in the world. Um, so I'm not going to go so much into that, but I just want to encourage you to educate yourself as we are in an election year so that you know what to do on your ballot and you know how to talk to others about it. Um, Back to what we do, um, some of our services, we give free pregnancy tests and pregnancy options counseling. So we will chat with women when they come in and um, kind of help them think through what they're going through and how it's going to affect their life. We'll talk to them about um, the different things that are sitting in front of them if they're pregnant, what, you know, the different options, the different choices that they have. We do not refer for or provide abortion, but we will speak to them about that if that is what they're considering because they won't get accurate information about how it will affect them anywhere else. And so we will talk to them and let them know the truth about how it will affect their life, their relationships, their health, all of those things so that they can understand what that decision actually means for them. Um, we also, If a woman does choose to parent her baby, we do offer earn while you learn classes and she can take those classes while she's pregnant and in the first year of baby's life she can earn $25 per class up to $500 and use those um, baby bucks we call them on Amazon to get things that she needs in order to keep that baby healthy and strong. Um, we have a hug of the heart boutique which also supports her in that so she can come once a month and get baby clothes, equipment, maternity supplies and also diapers, wipes and uh, formula. And then we also offer a post-abortion recovery class for women who are seeking healing and in need of that. We have that offering as well. Um, coming up, some things that we're starting this year, which is really exciting, exciting, we are starting a men's ministry. It's going to be a mentorship program um, with seasoned Christian men who are willing to meet a couple times a month with some of our clients. Um, we've had kind of an influx of young men who are coming in with their partners now. Um, or they're calling us themselves to set up appointments for their partners. So praise God, because we, that is a family unit, um, and we want those men in there as well. So we're starting that. Uh, we are starting a campus ministry in the fall. We've had several people pop up um, who are going to be involved in making that happen. It's going to be at CMU, and it's a Bible study focused for young women on their identity in Christ, their true identity. That's kind of how we go upstream um, and kind of help these women before they need us. Um, we also are going medical. Our board has voted to go medical. So over the next nine to 18 months, we're going to be converting to a medical clinic. So we'll be able to offer ultrasounds by the end of next year, hopefully. <laughs> and a little, yes, that's a great, because a little stat about that, 75% um, of women who see an ultrasound choose life. If the, if the male partner is there with them, it goes up to 97%. Yes. So we, we are so excited to be able to offer that soon. Um, and then one thing we have coming up, we, like I said, God has sustained our ministry for 40 years in an amazing way. We've never done any concentrated fundraising work, but because we are growing, we're going to start that this year. So we are going to have a Legacy of Hope Gala. It's going to be at the end of April, and we're excited to show um, the community where we've been and where we're going. So if you're interested in that, I'd love to talk to you more about it. Ways that you can help, um, please continue to pray for us. We covet your prayers. We need them. We need them for the staff, the volunteers, the board, and especially for our clients. We cannot have enough prayer for our center. So please do that. We, we love that so much. Um, you can volunteer. If something I've said today you think you might be able to fit in, I'd love to talk to you about that. Um, and then, of course, you can support us financially and with donations for our boutique, including baby clothes, baby equipment, things like that. So that's kind of a wrap of what we do. And I'm, again, I'm so thankful you guys invited us, and I will be here for the rest of the service. I'd be happy to talk to you after. So thank you.
So if the ushers would get ready to come forward, at this time we're going to take up our tithe and offering. So if you, amen, amen. Uh, if you want to give to the Pregnancy Center, there's an envelope at back of the seat so you can put uh, your, your donation in there and mark it, and then we'll make sure it gets there. And uh, if you're just doing regular tithes and offering, you can do the same, or you can just put it in there with a mark on your check. But uh, we are to be cheerful givers, right? Amen. Um, when God can use us when we allow our hearts to be in line with our pocketbooks. <laughs> because that allows us to bless back, or not bless, God's already blessed us. It's giving back to God what he's already allowed us to have. And so if the ushers would come forward, please. Heavenly Father. Thank you. Thank you for allowing us to be just part of the participating and giving back to you what you've given to us, Lord. And Lord, um, we just thank you for what you're going to do with the Pregnancy Center. Lord, you are just a great God, and you have many avenues of just reaching into our communities and help us to be part of that and uh, putting seed into the Pregnancy Center to help it to just reach more people, Lord. And we just thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, everybody. I decided I'm not going to walk up those stairs because I, I, like, I like being on solid ground. <laughs> you know, it's so amazing to look at all of you. Look at how full this place is. Pastor Green was talking about this, and it's just it's wonderful. See, we've been here a long time, and I remember seeing more of these. I think they're pink. I, pink seats than I did bodies, so it's really good to have you guys here. Um, we are going to have two new women's classes starting in March, which is exciting because we've had one forever and ever, and it's exciting to know that we have so many women that want to attend classes that we have to have two now. So we're really excited about that. And um, starting March 6th, we have a study in the book of Psalms. It's called The Lyrics of Life, and then Principles of Prayer. So there are two different classes, and one of them, the one in Psalms is going to be led by Candace, and then the principles of prayer will be with our person that is in charge of our prayer ministry here, uh, Beverly Ryder. We're excited to have these women, and I think that we're going to have a big group of people, so we will probably have them do classes again later on in the year, too. And if you're interested in coming to the classes, please let me know, and I will get your name on a list, and then we will let you know when it gets a little bit closer where those classrooms are going to be, okay? Thank you. I look forward to having you all with us. Amen. Thank you, Kathy. All right. I mean, are, are excited about the, the expansion that God has given us in our church, amen? In general, she talked about that. But uh, especially in Bible study, I've, I've been ex super excited to see um, all of that uh, happening. If you have your Bibles, if you want to turn with me to Matthew chapter 5. Uh, again, I said this at the beginning of service today, but I just want to say a huge thank you to all of you that supported financially, physically, uh, through prayer. Uh, we, we felt it. I, you know, I, I know sometimes when you get reports back and somebody's sick, you know, I think I, they, one of the other churches, they, they got the call about, well, what happened to that guy who was dying? No one was dying. Okay. I just want to be really clear. No one was dying. So, um, but so we did have a couple guys that, that got pretty sick. And so uh, they're, they're doing better. I, I text with everybody yesterday and everybody was improving. So, amen. Amen. He thanks you for taking your, taking you, your group down there. He thanks you for spreading his word down there, building his church for those Amen. people that they worship him. Without you, that would not be possible. Jesus loves you for that. Amen. Let me, let me. 
Yeah. And when I say, when we say you, understand this. This is you. This is not you. It's not up here. This is you. We did this together, and you were a part of this. And so just thank you. Thank you for being obedient there. And just, you know, obviously we have to recognize that God has a mission and a call for all of us. And so um, we, we got to go, and I think Paul said this last week, we traveled about 34 hours. We, we you know, really s- squeezed down an 18-hour boat ride into 36. It was awesome. And, uh, you know, so it was, we, we were expecting 18 hours on the boat. It was not 18. It was 18 hours a couple times. That's what happened. So, um, and so... But, but it was just, it, it was an awesome time, and, and you know, everything is on time. How do you mean to know that God is on time? You know, I came in, there were, yeah, you can go ahead and celebrate that. Our guys on our team that were um, coming in struggling, just, they weren't rested. And so that extra time was awesome. I could, I could just see stuff just falling off of them. It's awesome. And, and, and yet in us, we're like, I want to get there. I want to get this done. We want to put this thing built. And, and even when we left, there was like a couple courses of block that were, that were not done. Before we got back up the river, they were finished. So, so the entire uh, structure of the block of this church was finished. Actually, if you want to go ahead and put that up, I think I have a, a picture of the church we were working on. This is the group that, uh, and so this building, that building was not there two weeks ago, okay? Two weeks ago, that building was not there at all, and, and there it is up. If you go one more, I want to uh, talk about this briefly. Um, you could see this. This is the view of the, this church from the river, and uh, the pastor that is leading this ministry, he pastors a church in Manaus, but he has a heart for the indigenous people of Brazil. And as you go, this, this area is on a reservation. It's on the Angeria River. Uh, it's a tributary. And when I say tributary, don't think a river in Colorado. You've not seen a river like this if you haven't been outside of this state, that's for sure. Um, and this was just a tributary. This is one of the little small offshoots. And uh, it's like you can kind of see across it. That, that's kind of where we're at, but on to the other side. But this is from our boat as we are leaving. Uh, got to kind of take this shot and and looking back. But um, as we were riding down there, the pastor was sharing this vision that God had given him that this was to be a light to all of the people that as they came into uh, this area, because if you're going down this river into this tribal uh, reservation area, this is like one of the first points where you come into the, the villages. And so um, at, at this point, like right at the top of the, the reservation area of, this, this, uh, of the waters there, as you're coming down the river, uh, you're going to see this. And he said he just believed that God is calling this, this to be a light. And, and the Lord just kind of expanded that into my heart and said, you know, God is, God is building this to be a lighthouse and what does a lighthouse do? A lighthouse is something that shows us where the dangers are. It shows us all the things that were wrecking us, and we didn't know why we were getting destroyed and why, we were, why our lives weren't working out, but we see when the light shines, then we can see, okay, I can navigate through those waters. I, I can find safety to get home. I can have hope. How I many you know we need some hope in our world today? And, and so we recognize that as we were talking about this, I, and I'm just, man, the Holy Spirit, whoo, hello, right? thank you, Lord. Um, and, and we were talking about this this further about that this is going to be a lighthouse, and I, I just started expanding on that, and, and then he got all excited the next day. He comes in, he says, you know what, we're going to put the, on top of this building, there's going to be a water tower, and on top of that tower, we're going to put a light that is going to be solar powered, and it'll be going all the time, and so um, as you're coming down the river, you're going to, you're going to see it. You're not going to be able to miss it. And, it, and, and this is a part of what we're doing. Now, you could say, well, that's a building. It's a building. But the, the, the purpose of this building is to be a picture of what God is calling his church to be. To be a, a light in the middle of the darkness. And with that, I, I just want to jump in. If you're able, could you stand with me for the reading of God's word? Matthew chapter 5. Now, I will admit, I listened to last week's message, and I almost started over because I was like, you're preaching all over my stuff here, Johnny. I don't know what you're doing here. 
Um, but how many, you know, so maybe this is part two of last week. I don't know. But uh, how many know the Holy Spirit knows what he's doing? Amen. So listen to this. Verse 13. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it become seasoned? It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men so that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Let's pray. Father God, I pray in Jesus' name in these next few minutes that you would help me to speak nothing more or less than what you have to say to us today, and that every ear and every heart in this, this place, every one in the sound of my voice, whether they're online or in the room, would just say, God, I want you to speak to me today. I want you to, to open my ears and let my heart be ready for uh, uh, just you to plant something that's going to grow in me. Lord, take your word. Take your word in my life and do whatever you need to do. Father, take your word and do whatever you want. Could you pray that with me today? Father, take your word and do whatever you want. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You may be seated. Mary Jo, I, I, I apologize. I meant to start here. Could we stretch our hands this way? We want to, let's, let's pray over the Pregnancy Center. I, I believe that God w wants us to, to bless this ministry. Um, Father God, I pray in Jesus' name that as this, this, this team, these, these folks that are, are, are so committed to life and, and helping people find it and discover it's, it's not just about preserving the life of a baby. It's, it's life all around. It's life of the mom and the dad and the grandparents and all these people that are affected by this issue. And I pray in Jesus' name that you would use them to not just affect laws and affect people's mindset about what is right or what is wrong, but they would affect hearts. The hearts would be changed, God. And that you would use every time that somebody comes in these doors to sit down and just talk to somebody. Every time somebody wants to come in and, and have an ultrasound done. Every, every time somebody wants to just talk through what they're thinking about, whether it's in the recovery side, whether it's in the restoration and healing side, or whether it's in the prevention side, Lord God, I pray an anointing on this ministry that your kingdom would come and your will would be done and that you would use them mightily in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you so much. I, I, love, I love pregnancy center ministry. I, you talked about the one in Denver years ago. 50-pound uh, overweight Hans decided somehow got himself signed up for the pastor's 5K run. And it wasn't, it wasn't a walk, it was a run, and I, I, di I didn't make it. I'm just going to tell you, I did not make it. I came out there, and there was this pastor's friend of mine, and he comes out there in those little running, the scary ones, you know, the running shorts that are like, you know. It's like, he, he did that for fun. I'm like, no, no, this is not fun. There's nothing fun about that. No. But, it, but I, I, love, I love the ministry because it really is, it's a heart ministry. It's not just trying to convince people to agree with them. It's trying to help people to see and, and allow God to change their hearts. So thank you. And so um, and back to where we're at because I think it's, it's relevant to what we're talking about. Jesus gives this example and he says, look, you guys, you, you have to understand, I've left you here. You're the salt of the earth. You're the flavor. You're the seasoning. You're the thing that makes things palatable. Have you ever had something that was supposed to have salt that didn't have salt? <laughs> and you're like, what is wrong with this? Some of you are like, oh, I live in that dream because that, you know, the doctor put me on this diet and I'm not supposed to have salt anymore. And yet, he says, Look, you, you are the salt of the earth. You are called by God to be seasoning, to be flavor, to be life-giving to the world that, that I placed you in. And then he goes on, he says, you're, you're the light of the world. Now that's quite a statement. How can we be the light of the world? He is the light of the world, right? Jesus is the light of the world. How can I take his place? How can I ever replace him? You cannot. You cannot. And yet Jesus himself said to us, you are the light. You are the light of the world. 
And so he's called us into this place of, of being able to be light in the middle of darkness. Now sometimes, can we admit, that can be a little bit intimidating. It can be a little bit difficult to, to allow our light to shine when everything around us seems to be oppressive, seems to be opposing, seems to be in opposition to, seems to be pushing back against and saying, I don't want any part of that light. And yet, it's kind of backwards, isn't it? Why would light ever be afraid of darkness? You ever thought about it? Can darkness overcome light? The only way darkness overcomes light is when the light refuses to shine. When the light refuses to turn on, when the light refuses to show. And so God has a call for us to be light in the middle of darkness. As so much of our temptation, though, if we're really honest, is to simply blend in. We've even come up with church growth models that are all about this idea of, oh, we want to fit the culture. We want to be like people. We want people to like us. How many of you like to be liked? I'm waiting for a few of you. Okay, there's a few of you. I know. How many of you don't care? Yeah, no, no, don't raise your hand. Don't raise your hand. Don't do it. Some of you are like, oh, me? Yeah. yeah. And people beside you are saying, yep. You know. We, we want to be liked. We, we want people, we want to get along. We want people to be happy. We want to be in a neighborhood where it's, it's not just like, oh, there's those people coming in again. Now, let me help you to understand this. When he's talking about this, he's not saying go around and make people hate you. Can, can we just be honest? Sometimes we might have flipped that a little too far into that direction. Like, I'm going to be so weird I'm going to be so, like, you know, but, but he says you're supposed to be light in the middle of darkness. So guess what? You're weird. If you're a follower of Christ, you're weird. Can you just deal with that right now? Look at somebody, just tell them, you're weird. You're weird. You are weird. I, I love Craig Rochelle. Several years ago, the pastor of Life Church, he said, you know, it's time that we try to be weird because normal ain't working. And how many of you know, normal's not working. It's not working. And so we got to come to this place of recognizing that God has called us to a level of weirdness. Now, not weird in just like, you know, for a long time, we wanted to be weird only in certain things. I'm going to be weird. I'm going to like make myself like stand out the way that I dress. I'm going to be, you know, and, and I'm going to call it holiness. Hello? And, and you know, we had the... I, when I was at school, they, they used to like joke around singing the song, if your hair's too long, there's sin in your heart. Get it cut today and make a new start. You know, and I was like, you know, so it's like, what's this? Johnny says, I don't have that problem at all. I, I just, not even tempted by it, you know. But, but when, when I, it's not about all of these things that are just saying, oh, I'm, I'm just going to show people I'm a Christian. I'm going to, like, Jesus juke every conversation. How many of you met somebody that they, like, hey, who do you think is going to win the game? Well, Jesus is going to win the game. He's like, you know, like, what, 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 what did you just do there? But at the same time, can we leave him out of anything that we're talking about? And so we, we have to be able to, in balance, like listen to people and hear their heart and not always try to manipulate conversations our way, but allow the Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us and be able to be salt and light in a situation where you just bring flavor, where you just bring, like there's, there's something that, where it was corrupted and it was getting rotten, you brought something that brought preservation. Hello? This is what people of God should do. We should show up, and there should be seasoning, flavor, and preservation. There should be uh, healing. should be people of forgiveness and grace, and we should be people who are weird that way, who love people who don't love them. 
It should be people who are, are just strange enough to not worry about the fact that it's going to feel different or look different because you took a stand for something that was right. Now, it's not about shaking your finger in the face of others and saying, well, you're the one that's wrong, and if you weren't for you, you're, oh, you're ruining this world, you're ruining our country, you're ruining... Blah, blah, blah. But it's about the people of God living with integrity. When you punch in on your job, do you punch in, or do you kind of, okay, what can I get away with today? Because I've seen it. Can I, can I just be honest? I, I was in a, the church that I spent 14 years in before we came here. Uh, the pastor would say this all the time. If, if you don't do a hard day's work at your job and you don't, like, you're not honest with your job, don't tell people where you go to church. <laughs> Why? Because it's, it's lacking in the integrity that God has called us to. And it's not just about work or job. It's about all of it. There's none of it we leave out all of our life is supposed to be light and shining and showing who Jesus is. And so we live with integrity. We walk in honesty. We, we care about people. We show compassion. We are, are people that are willing to give up ourselves and our own rights and our own way and what we want and be able to say, God, I'm, I'm ready to, to lay down my time for someone else. I'm ready to, to do whatever it takes to, to help somebody. And yet, we recognize the tension in being light in the dark. It feels weird. It feels like, oh, there's something wrong. How many of you remember when you were in school, the walk of shame? You know what I'm talking about, the walk of shame? When you were a freshman, especially freshman in high school, if that was their first year at school, maybe some of you went to school when it, their first year in high school was 10th grade. I don't know. But it, whatever it was, the first year you walked in and you really weren't sure where your friends were at and you're walking down the hall and you feel like everyone in the building is stopping and going, would you ever wear that? Oh, my God. I didn't feel that at all. I wore, my, I wore my pink shirt and red pants and insisted they match. So, okay, I, I didn't care. I didn't care. It's true. You can go back and look it up. It, it happened. And yet I did care. Because I remember going to the school, like if I was going to a basketball game, and you had to, like if you got there and the bleachers were already full and you had to walk all the way across the room. You know what I'm talking about, right? You're like, oh, that's just, uh, you feel like blazing eyeballs, like just piercing your skin, and you're like, ah, you know, stop looking at me. Like, can I crawl under the bleacher somehow? Because we're nervous about standing out. Now, I'm not talking about standing out in a way that just is saying, look at me, look at me. It's all about me, 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 me. That's not of God at all. But when we're willing to say, okay, God, I'm willing to show up and be light in the middle of darkness, and guess what? That's going to get some attention. That's going to that's gonna show, and it's going to be obvious, and, and it should be something that people can see. Now, I, I, I'll just be honest. My kids, they get easily embarrassed with their dad. I, I just, I can't imagine why. You know, I mean, I am just like the cool dad, right? That's, that's me. So why would you ever be embarrassed? <laughs> don't laugh too hard back there my, my daughter is just like oh brother but uh, but they really do they get, they get like anytime they're you know just I'm just singing in public what's wrong with that just making a big deal about some some waiter that my daughter happened to find attractive I don't I don't know what's I don't know what the issue is come on you know, come on. But they, they, they don't want to stand out. They don't want it to be like obvious, like, oh, wow, look at what you did. I remember, you know, there was a couple times I had to pick up my kids, and, and our, our vehicle was down, and I had to pick up my kids from school, and I had to roll up in the Aliento de Vida van. Oh, they hated that. <laughs> they hated that. It was, you know, the army green on there, and, the, you know, it's Spanish words, and everybody, I was like, what is what? I'm like, this is awesome. Bring all your friends. Come on, get in. 
But they did not want to be seen. They didn't want to stand out because it was like, oh, you're, you're embarrassing me, Dad. You're embarrassing me. <laughs> but do we get to the point where we start to do that with our light? We're so, oh, I just don't want to stand out. I don't want to make anybody uncomfortable. I don't want anybody to, to notice that I'm different. No, we're called to be light in the dark. And when the light shines in the dark, it brings something. It shows the change that God has brought about in us. Now, if there is no change, we need to deal with that first. We need to allow God's light to shine into our hearts in the first place because when the light of Christ shines in us, guess what? We are transformed. We don't... We don't act the same way. We don't walk into the same stuff. We don't, you know, and I, I've told the story about me walking into the dark room and, and dr drilling, like, I mean, walking full on head, ding, into the pole that was in the center of the room, kind of like these here, you know. Yeah, give us a, give us a ring there, Pete. That was, that's what it sounded like on my head. So, you know, um. but, but when the light shows up, then you're not going to do that. You're not going to keep falling all over yourself. You're not going to keep going into the same bondage and the same junk. He wants to set you free from that. How? Because he's shining the light so you know what to do. That's why he said, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. That's why he said, I have hidden your word in my heart so that I will not sin against you. That's why he talks about, look, let, your, let God's light shine so that you know where to go. You know how to live. You know how to respond. You know how to act. You know how to speak. When the light shines, all of a sudden our speech changes. How many, you notice that? We we'll start talking different. Now, I don't mean Christianese different. I don't mean like you talk, start talking about things that no one understands if you haven't been in church for 50 years. You know what I'm talking about, right? But the light should shine. And the light should look like Jesus, and it should look like his spirit in us. It should shine the love and the joy and the peace and patience and kindness and goodness and gentleness and faithfulness and self-control. It should shine his fruit. The, the evidence that he is in our lives is that shining from us. Now, I'll admit it's going to be weird. But that's kind of the point, isn't it? When a lighthouse starts to light up the rocks, does it stand out? Is it obvious? Are you looking at it going, why, where's that light coming from? No, you look, you're like, there it is, there's the light. And so we have to be light in the middle of darkness. And then, we, we, and then he calls us as everyday, ordinary people, right, Johnny? To be, to be people who impact the world with the light that Christ has put in us to, br to bring about hope. You know, hope that our world desperately needs. You know how they receive hope? Turn the light on. Show them that there is a way. Show them that there is, there is light in the middle of the darkness they find themselves in. Show that there is hope, whatever they're facing, whatever they're going through, there's hope of change. There's hope of, of freedom. There is hope of a new life. When people see light, they gain hope. Have you ever been lost in the dark? I, I, I've been in some caves where it was like when they go in and they're like, oh, we want to show you how dark this actually is, where there's just no source of light that is available, other, you know, and so they turn off the lights in there, and you're like, if you've ever been up to Glenwood Caverns, they do this up there, but in a lot of different caves, they, they show you this, and you can't, like, you can wave your hand in front of your face, and you're like, it's not there. You can't see it. And the, the, the point is that in the middle of that, you start to feel like, I'm going to be like this forever. I'm never getting out of here. I, I'm going to be stuck. I'm going to be wandering around in circles. And at some point, the light breaks through. Hello? Somebody got it. Somebody got it. At some point, the light breaks through, and you see, oh, there is hope. I'm going to move towards the light. I'm going to get up, and I'm going to get out of this hole that I'm stuck in. I'm going to see a way forward. And Christ is calling us to be people who shine the hope. 
who shine the light and, and, and allow his light to shine in us. Now, let's, let's be honest. Some people get blinded by the light, right? What happens if you're in the dark and they suddenly turn on all the lights? If you're a teenager in this room, you know what I'm talking about when you wouldn't get out of bed the first seven times you were asked, right? <laughs> Come on now, yeah, you see, I, I got an amen there, all right, all right. And so what the parents resort is like, oh, come in, let me turn on every light. I'm going to go find some gigawatt lights or whatever, you know, and I just, you know, and shine. And it's like, oh, and, you know, it's like, you know, my wife loves to throw, in, throw open the curtains. That's right, you know, throw, open the curtains. You're like, Time. So when people see the light and they're in the darkness, they might fight that. They might be opposed to it. They might be like, oh, that's bright and it's annoying. Stop it. And sometimes our temptation could be to be, oh, well, let me calm that down a little bit. But what happens if you just leave the light on? The pupils regulate. And they get adjusted and they acclimate to the light so that they can see the very person and the very thing and the very love that they were opposed to. Suddenly they realize, oh, wow, this, there's hope in this. There's, there is hope. I could actually have joy. I can have peace that, that passes all understanding. And so we have to... It's a, I'm sorry. I just did we get it? I said, Who are you? I, I got anyhow. So so so. But see, this is this is often and we got to be careful now. That God will drop you places and have you share share your faith, share the, the love of Christ with people, maybe randomly. But we got to be careful about what I call hit and run evangelism. Like, I want to get in, get out, and get gone. Like, I, I want to tell you the story. I want to give you the information. Say, turn or burn and get out of there, right? And, and it's kind of hit and run because it's not about listening. It's not about relationship. It's not about valuing somebody as a person that needs Jesus. And so he's called us into this place where we would, we would allow the light to, to be able to be acclimated. Like, somebody can, can say, oh, I mean, I have some questions about that. But where are they going to see hope if they don't see hope in us? Where is this world going to find hope if they do not find hope in the people of God? You tell me. Now, God is working. Even when we don't see it, even when we don't recognize it, even when we don't understand how he is working, but we have to be to get in there and bring the hope and let the, the hope shine so that they can, can see it, even if it takes time to acclimate, even if it takes time to step, sit down and have multiple cups of coffee or multiple meetings or multiple times. I, I had a young man that, that came to our youth group, and he got there by having to do community service. Like, I don't know how that works. Like, my youth group was so uh, difficult to be in that, that you had to do community service to get there. I don't know. I don't know what that was, but uh, but he he, um, he came and, and no he was working at the church. I was just kidding about that. But he was he was working on stuff at the church, and so I take him home. And after we just sit outside of his house having conversations, and I'm trying to turn the conversation to Jesus. He's wanting to talk about aliens, you know. And so we're talking about aliens, and I just over and over, you know, and we we sat there and 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 just talked and talked and and uh, over time. That, that conversation turned uh, over time. It's uh, this, this young man came to faith. In, in fact, it, you know, you, you always want it to be, you want to be there, right? Like you want to be the guy that closes the deal and, uh, you know, and, and gets to pray with somebody being like, oh, I get to, I get to, I've spent all this time. I put all this effort and energy. Well, he calls me up. He's like, you know, I was thinking about something you said a couple weeks ago at youth group and something we had been talking about in the car. And I just prayed to receive Christ by myself, on my own. And I was like, I wanted to be there. Come on. But it was awesome. No, I celebrate that. 
I celebrate it because that guy has a genuine faith and a relationship with God. I still talk to him every once in a while. And uh, just what a blessing to, to know, you know, and, and at one point, you know, I don't know how I'm going down this road, but he, he, he grabbed me and he's, he's, he, we were talking, we were probably sitting outside of his house again and having one of those conversations. And next thing you know, he starts telling other people what I've said to him. And he starts repeating the things that I've told him. And he looks over at me and he's like, you brainwashed me. <laughs> and I said, your brain needed washing. So yes, I did. I did. So. But people see the contrast between life in the dark and life in the light and they gain hope. They see truth and they see hope at the end of that and they can say, oh, that, that means that I can see this happen. It's the call of the church to, to shine a, a light of hope, to be a lighthouse. Say you're almost home. You need, to, you need to trust in Jesus. Not, not you're almost home, oh, you're going to get through it, it's all going to be okay. No, you have hope that wherever you're at, whatever waters you're on, no matter how difficult you think the circumstances, no matter how much you think there's no way you'll ever navigate out of this, it will always be like this, there is hope because there is light in the middle of darkness. There is light in the middle of the darkness. I believe it's the call for this church. As I was sharing that about the lighthouse, I just believe that's, that's the call for us to be light in this community. That people can see Jesus. They can see the grace of God. They can see the love of God. They can see the power of God to transform lives. Now, we've, we've got to be honest Right? Because sometimes when we go walk around trying to act like, well, I got it all together and now I'm all perfect. You know, years ago when I struggled with sin, come on, people. The sins may have changed, the names may, and yet we find ourselves still growing, still needing more. But if, when we're honest and we are integrous in our lives and we're willing to be authentic with people, then we can show that there is hope for wherever you've been and whatever you've been through. Jesus is the answer. And so that that's, brings me to this, 1 Peter chapter 3. Verse 15 and 16 says this, But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and always be ready to give a defense to everyone who asks you a reason for the hope that is in you, with meekness and with fear. Having a good conscience that when they defame you as evildoers, did you hear it? It's going to happen. They're going to call good evil. They're going to call righteous living evil. They're going to call telling people that life is better and you will be better for it if you choose life. And they're telling you you're hateful and you are opposing someone's rights. It's a lie. But having a good conscience that when they defame you as evildoers, they, those who revile your conduct in Christ, would be ashamed. Why? Because at the end of it, they know it's good. While they want to lie to themselves and deceive themselves and get themselves all worked up into the lather, at the end, in their gut, they know this is true. That Christ is who he says he is, that it is, is good. His ways are better. His ways are better. He says, be ready at all times to give a defense. And the, the NIV and several other translations use the word to give an answer for the hope that is in you. I, I hope that we live in a way as light that people are asking us, hey, how are you doing that? How are you getting through that? How are you dealing with that surgery the way you're dealing with it? How are you handling that treatment the way you've handled it? And I've shared before just how God has allowed light to shine in, in really rough situations in my life. When my wife was going through uh, chemo and all of the treatments for, for cancer and uh, we were dealing with that, uh, we would just go in, and, and, you know, the peace of God was on us. And there was a guy that was sitting beside her 
that would that for some reason her appointments were always synced up with his and he was always at the oncologist the same day she was and we were just sitting there you know just kind of talking i don't even really know that we actually introduced ourselves but sarah looks over at him and just like hey do you look at this picture in this magazine just with joy and he was like i was ready to give up i was ready to quit on all of this and just die but you have joy in the middle of that. And you're going through what I'm going through. And with what I see it, I see it taking its toll on your body, but you're, there's, there's just such joy and contentment. Are we ready to answer that? Are we ready to tell somebody why? Are we ready to say, okay, well, let me tell you about the joy that I have. Let me tell you where this peace comes from. I'm not sure if I loaded it. There was a video that I, I put in kind of late, but uh, there we got. I got to be a part of a baptism last Sunday, and so there was there was five individuals that came down and and were were baptized in the river there, and um, this this one man, he he came down in the river, and as he was coming down in, the the guy that was had been translating for me. Um, he, he kind of leaned in beside me and he said, hey, this guy's a miracle. This guy's a miracle. I'm like, oh, that's, yeah, all right, awesome. And I, so baptized him and then he, they, we got back on the boat and started heading down the river to, to come back home. And the, he started telling us, he's like, this, this guy was like the, the hunter for his tribe. That was his role, his job. He was the hunter-gatherer. He was out in the, the, the jungle all the time. But he said that this guy was out in the woods, and he, he had a vision. God just showed himself, like said, you, you need to trust Jesus. And he just, he, he like, didn't know what it was all about. He had no idea, but he, he came back. And because of the work that has been done, they're laying the groundwork to have pastors and have people that could give an answer for, here's what God is showing you. Here's what God is doing. This man came to Christ. Even though they, the original contact was completely the Holy Spirit. The original conversation, all it was that, we, that somebody had to do was say, well, this is, this is what God showed you. Let's do it. Let's give our lives to Christ. And that man, I had the privilege of being one of the guys baptized, along with this, the pastor there in the village, to just baptize this man in, in the name of the Father and Son and the Holy Spirit. What a joy. Because whether you see it or not, whether you recognize it or not, God is working You've got family that you've been praying for. God is working. You've got people that you're really, I want an opportunity. I want to speak. I want to, I want to share. I want to convince them. I want to, I want to outwit them and, and get them tr convinced of the truth. But God is working even when you don't see it. And we have to be willing to say, Lord, just help me to be ready. Help me to be available in that moment. Help me to be ready to just say, God, whatever you want to do, I, I'm allowing you space. I, I'm giving you time. If you want me to, to skip lunch today to have this conversation, if you need me to, to be a little late to that thing that I was going to, to, to tell somebody about Jesus. If you need me to take some time away from something that I would have enjoyed and, 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 and to discover something that you're going to enjoy a lot more. Hey Amen, Johnny. Is there, is there anything that you could say, man, there's more joy than being able to tr lead somebody to a relationship with Christ? I, when I was, when I, again, when I was a youth pastor, we would take the kids bowling and different stuff. And this one time, uh, this this kid, one of, one of the kids in my youth group invited a friend. Hey, just come bowling with us. Now, this is a bowling thing. It wasn't like there was no program. There was no worship thing. There was no, like, there was no devotion or talk or anything that was official or formal. It was just we're going to show up. We're going to go bowling. It's going to be fun. We'll build some relationships, build some connection, come back, and we'll, we'll, we will hope that you'll come back to church. We hope you come back to youth group. That was, that was the agenda. Sat down with this kid, started talking to him, and he, he was, it was like all the things, it, like the Holy Spirit had already showed him everything. He just brought him to me and said, here, here, you pray with him. 
Like he's just basically saying, hey, I want to get saved. Can you tell me about that? <laughs> I'm like, all right. This is, I like this. But this is what I'm saying. God wants us to be ready to give an answer. Sometimes it'll be that. Sometimes you're just going to be the planter of a seed. Sometimes you're going to come along, you're going to water that seed, and you're going to be the one that just says, okay, let me put a little something on there so it can grow. Sometimes you get to be the one that just shows up and gets to harvest. His, his family was in another church, so I didn't really have contact with them after that, but praise God, I got to be a part of that. Because whether you recognize it or not, God is desiring to move his church forward. But he wants to do it through you and through me. He wants to, us to let our light shine. He wants us to be that, peop that people that as people enter into the dangerous waters of life and they start to see that all the shipwreck and all the, the ways, the disasters and the stuff that has caused them so much strife and so much turmoil and addiction and bondage. And as they go through those waters, they can see the light coming from his church. But will we make room for him? Will we allow him space? Worship team, if you'd come. Will we allow him space? Will we say, God, I, I, I want you to, to, to shine your light in my life. I want to be salt and light for you, not just on my own, but recognizing that you're working when I don't see it. You're working in ways that I don't understand it, but you are in control. God is expanding his kingdom, folks. And he's looking for his church to say, yes, I will be available. Yes, I will be salt and light. I will allow your truth to shine through me. Now, I have to say this because I recognize as I talk about the light shining in the darkness... There may be somebody in the sound of my voice, maybe in the room or online, but you're still in darkness. You found yourself in a place where you, you're stuck and maybe you're, you, you've been running up against the same rocks over and over. And God is wanting you to know you can be free. He's saying... Would you open your heart to Jesus? Would you allow my light to shine into your life? Would you allow me to show you a better way? Father God, I pray in Jesus' name that you would help us to never rush past this, but that we would always allow you space to point people to you. If you're here and you need to you need to trust Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You need that light to turn on in your life. You need him to shine into the darkness. I don't know the story. I don't know all the details, but I know that my God saves. He's no respecter of persons, but he 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 loves us that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him would not perish, but have everlasting life. When we say we believe, we're not just talking about a mental assent to an idea, but we are talking about we believe this is true and we're responding to it. We're acting on it. If that's you and you're ready to act on that today and you're saying, Hans, I, I, I want to follow Jesus. I want to trust him with my life. I want to surrender every part of me to him. Because I make a mess of it by myself. But today I want to say, Lord, your way is better. If that's you, could you just pray this with me? Father God, I confess that I'm a sinner. 
on my own, I can't do anything to remove that. But I believe that Jesus died for my sin and that you raised him to life. I trust in you. I surrender to you. Here's my life, Lord. Make me new. I confess that Jesus is my Lord and my Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer or maybe you just need to really settle that in your own heart, I I just want to encourage you in a moment, there's going to be an opportunity for you to come and find a place to pray. But I'd love to connect with you. If you're online, if you'd reach out to me, you can direct message me. And uh, I, I would love to just connect further and just share some things with you. you're here and you're saying, you know what, I, I've allowed my light to be dim. I've been a little concerned about how weird it might look. Or maybe I just didn't even recognize that God could actually use me as salt and light. But today I want to say, Jesus, yes, I will be the salt of the earth that you've called me to be. Yes, I will be the light that you've called me to be. Yes, Lord, we, your church, will be the city on a hill that light cannot be hidden. Just like we saw that church up on top of that hill that's going up. Lord God, it's not going to be hidden. It's not something you can hide and put back in the corner again. May we be willing to to take the bold step to say we're going to be out on the edge. We're going to be out in the front. We're not, not, not making it about us, not saying look at me, but saying look at him. Here's my life, Lord God. I surrender it all to you. That's your prayer. As the worship team plays and sings this, could we just respond to him right now? You can stand, you can kneel, you can come forward. These altars are open. Could we just respond to him right now? Yes, oh God. Here is where I live.
This is my surrender. This is my surrender. Here is where I lay it down. You are all I'm chasing now. This is my surrender. This is my surrender. Lord, everything that we are is in your hands. And you are everything that we need. So I pray in Jesus' name that we would live in that place of surrender, saying, God, every part of us, every part of us is yours. So we make room for you to lead us and guide us and do whatever you want to do through us. Lord, may your light shine. May this, this church, may the body of Christ uh, be lighthouse to the world, showing the, the light in the middle of the darkness that lives that were being crushed and crashing against the, the rocks and the, the traps of this world are being set free and delivered and navigated home. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. Amen. Gre greet somebody. Give a hug. I have a handshake. So glad that you are here worshiping with us today. God bless.